Mumineen, we are starting Surah Maryam. Inshallah, this is first Rajab and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the haqq Muhammad wa ala ta'areen that he, he give us a tawfiqah to complete this surah inshallah successfully inshallah and may Allah accept it uh, despite of our, of our all uh, shortcomings so the first verse we recite is kaf ha ya ayn swat so these are kaf huruf maqattaat means separated words and you will find in Quran these kind of separated words in the beginning of surah so uh, Mizan has said very Mizan has explained very beautifully about these uh, separated words muqattaat that in some surah share the same words and and uh, it is very interesting that the surahs which share the same words have same topics so there is some correlation between the the these separated words in the beginning of surah and the topics Allah wants to explain with these words that these are just uh, alphabets and with the power, uh, power of Allah, these alphabets Allah made Quran. So Allah is explaining that this is the, this miracle of Quran is just by words. And Allah challenged all humanity including jinn that you know uh, bring surah like that. And I use only these words, you use it and bring surah and, and nobody could bring anything close to Quran. We all know that. Vikrur Ahmad Rabbika Abdahu Zakaria. Mention this is a mention of mercy of your Lord unto his servant Zakaria. Because in this uh, chapter Allah described in the beginning about Zakaria alayhi salam, then he describes about Bibi Maryam and other things. But the beginning of Surah starts with description of how, how Allah was merciful to his slave. Zakaria and his mercy is very clear that the, the biggest mercy he gave it to him was is for, for sure prophethood but then his his son who was a great prophet and very unique prophet and Allah blessed his son in his old age you know and how he blessed him it was a, a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is talking about it Idnada Rabbuhu Idnada Rabbuhu Nida an Khafiya when he called upon his Lord in secret. So there is a uh, there is a discussion about it, but before I go to the, this discussion, I want to come back to Kaf Ha Ya Ayn Swad because I made some I missed some points about it. So there are a lot of uh, narrations about uh, the deeper meaning of this Kaf Ha Ya Ayn Swad. But the most famous uh, narration about uh, is uh, from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam uh, from Kaf is Al Kafi, Allah's name Kafi. And from Ha is Al Hadi, and from Ya is Al Wali, and from Ain is Al Alim, and for Thad uh, Al Sadiq Al Wada. So these are the these are the things because when we say Kaf Ya Kaf Ha Ya Ain Thad, because we have some dua from Imam Ali al Salam when he calls Allah with these names, you know. So for, for, so when you are calling Kaf, means you are calling Allah as Kafi, Al Kafi, who is sufficient, and Al Hadi, who is a guide for us, and from Ya is He is our guardian, Wali, and from Ayn is Al Alim, uh, who knows everything, and from the Saad is He is Sadiq, as Sadiq Al Wada. You know Allah has promised us paradise. You know if we do good deeds, you know Allah has promised paradise. Allah has also promised us to help us in this world and next world. So these are Allah's promises for the believers, you know. So, so, and there are, uh, there are other also different uh, interpretation of these uh, five letters, but we are not going to in, go into detail about it. So l let me come back to the verse which we were talking about, uh, verse number third, uh, that when he called upon his Lord in secret. Now the question comes that uh, why he was calling in secret? and why he was calling Nada means a loud voice in a secret so because on one hand is, is, is Nada Rabbuhu Nida and Khafiya so uh, 
so so on one hand is uh, he, he called him loudly but in secret so it can be possible that if you are in a place where you are doing salat in a, in a mehrab and you could be alone there and there's a secret about it nobody's around you and then you call Allah loudly that can happen so the best prayer is that when you call Allah in secret you know Allah talks in the Quran to ask him secretly you know so he was calling Allah uh, loudly in, in secret now there are some uh, uh, commentary about why he was calling him secret secret especially because he was very old man and he was calling for to his son you know if somebody could have heard him the old man such an old age is asking for son people could have make uh, could make like a joke about him you know so that's also one of the commentary about it. so now there's another com commentary why he was calling loudly now you know Mizan says there is a possibility that Maybe he was feeling a little bit distant from Allah because of his shortcomings, which he thought about himself. For, for us, he's a great prophet, but maybe he thought about himself. Maybe he has some shortcoming, and maybe he felt a little bit distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was calling him loudly. That's one of the comment. Kala Rabbi inni wana almu minni wastar rasu shaybaun. وَلَمْ أَكُمْ بِدْعَاءِ رَبِّي شَقِيَّةً He said, My Lord, verily my bones are weakened, and my head in all aflame with hoariness. And my Lord, I have never been unblessed in prayers to you. So what he was calling about, he said Rabbi twice. See, there's a beauty of asking for prayer, dua, that you call Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, O my Lord. And this verse, especially, is a very rare verse that he said Rabbi twice, because he was begging so much from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what I was saying, that my bones are weakened. Bones are the main structure of the body. If they become weak, then we, our whole body becomes weak. So he was describing so beautifully his weakness of the body. Because his bones are the real structure where our body is the foundation of our body. He said, my, my bones are weakened. That's how he was so, so humble. And my head is in all a flame with hoariness. What is the meaning of this? My head is in a flame with holiness flames going around him uh, holiness is a whiteness grayness because he was describing his old age so beautifully describe his old age because he had a black hair before then a black hair he started getting gray hair spreading around his in his head like the flames of fire he said he was so humble and descriptive to allah about his weakness that my bones are weak because i'm an old man and the whiteness is spreading like fire in my head he was so beautifully describing his old age and he, he again said my lord i have never been unblessed in prayer to you that whenever i prayed for you you always bless me see whenever he asked to allah subhanahu wa anything allah blessed him you know because he was a great prophet we are the sinners when we do pray to allah many times our prayers are not accepted you know it is because if you read Dua Kumal, many times our prayer don't get accepted because of our sins, you know. So we, we seek Allah's forgiveness today. To, today is the first of Rajab that may Allah see, keep us away from sinning and accept our Dua. Bihaqi Muhammad wa All our hajjah we should do in the month of Rajab. Inshallah. وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِي مِنْ وَرَائِي وَكَانَ تِمْرَتُ وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِي مِنْ وَرَائِي وَكَانَ تِمْرَأَتِ آقِرًا فَحَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّا And verily I fear my kinder after I am gone and my wife is barren so grant me from your process a successor Yerusuni wa Yerusu min ala Yaqub wa ja'al rabbi radiya shall be my inheritor and the inheritor of the posterity of Jacob and make him my lord well pleasing these two verses we inshallah talk about together so what he was saying that I'm, I am afraid of my mawali kinder who are Mawali? Kindred. According to Elabed, it is your uncle and uncle's children are Mawali, you know. So he was afraid of his uncle and uncle's children. And what was his fear? I am gone and my wife is barren. 
So grant me from your possess a successor, Wali, like a Wali, you know. And mostly when you ask for Wali, you ask for a son, you know, because son is a successor, especially in your property. And what he said that Yerusuni wa Yerusumin ale Yaqub, he should be inheritor of me and and inheritor of the posterior of Jacob, and make him my lord, well pleasing. Vajalu Rabbi Radia, and he should be well pleasing to you. No, now there is a long discussion about these two verses, and and Misa has done a lot of discussion about these two verses in a very great length. We'll give some, some synopsis here. You know, uh, when Bibi Fatma Zera Salaman Aleha came to know that Bagh Fidak, the garden of Fidak, which her father gave it to her in, in Virsa, first Khalifa took it away. She went to the first Khalifa and she said, Oh Khalifa, why you took away the, the garden which my father gave it to me in the wasiyat and she read these verses she read these verses which we just read there wa yerusu min ala yaqub ja'nu rabbi radiya she read these verses that allah gave inheritance to yahya alayhi salam from yaqub alayhi from zakaria alayhi salam why did you take it away so he said that the prophets don't have any kind of varis you know he just used that's what he said. So there is a long discussion here about when he asked for Yerusuni for Yerusuni in Ale Yaqub, who should be the my inheritor and the inheritor of posterity of Jacob. So what kind of inheritance he was talking about? That is a discussion. Was this inheritance was about prophethood? was that inheritance was about ilm, knowledge or this inheritance was about property. See, you cannot get inheritance in, in, in inheritance prophethood. A prophet's son cannot become mandatory prophet. This is not the case. We see a lot of prophets who had that case, you know, like Nuh alayhi salam who was Ulul Az Pegambar and his son was Kafir, you know, we know that. So there is no inheritance for Prophet. And there is no inheritance for Ilm. Like we have a great Alim and maybe his son becomes something else. Because you cannot inherit you, the knowledge. You have to study hard yourself. If you don't study, you will not become an Alim. But what is inheritance automatically is your property. It goes straight to you. Now there are a few more discussions about it. Because when he said inni khiftul mawali that I'm afraid of my my kindred. What was the fear about kindred? Was that he was afraid of his uncle and his cousins. If you think that he was asking for a war is in a letter for the prophethood so why he should be afraid of his uncle and his children that they will get prophethood? If you are a prophet, you will never be afraid of somebody else becoming a prophet, right? Because you are a kind person, you are a spiritually high person, you want everybody to be spiritually high. You will never be fear of them to become prophets. You can never even think in that line. Or you can never think in that line that they'll become great alim, you know. The fear was that, that his wife had had lot of property from her forefathers, which were from Dawud So his fear was that if he dies and his wife is barren, that money will go to those people and they can spend in wrong way. That was his fear. And now there's another point, Wajalu Rabbi Radiya. When he asked for that, that oh Allah make him well pleasing. What was the meaning of well pleasing? Now there is a more discussion about it. When did he ask his dua? When did he ask his prayer? The, the reality is that when he was around Bibi, Bibi Maryam Salam Aleha, that when he saw that she is in the mihrab and he saw that 
the fruits were coming from the heaven to her and the fruits were like unique fruits you know in the summer time she was getting winter fruits and winter time she was getting summer fruit so she he asked her uh, where did you get these fruits from so Bibi Maryam said Allah gave me these fruits so he was so excited about it and he became so hopeful from Allah's mercy you know that he went to the mihrab and did dua for himself that oh Allah give me also son like and when he was saying in his mind was Bibi Maryam that Allah gave her so much spirituality and so much wisdom and knowledge and good deeds. So when he was asking Radiya, he was asking that he should have a son who should be like Bibi Maryam, that who should have high spiritual status and should have a lot of good deeds and good deeds will come with the knowledge inshallah. So that was in, in his mind. And if when he was talking about Radiya, means Allah should be Ravi, then if, he, if in his mind it was prophethood, why he will say him Raziya? He would ask just make him prophet. Because prophet station is higher than being Ravi. So if, if he in his mind was prophethood, why? What are you using the name? word Raziya? Ya Zakaria in Nanubarshiko. Ya Zakaria in Nanubarsh. يا زكريا إنا نبشرك بغلام غلام نسمه يحيى لم نجعله له من قبل سميا و زكريا verily we give you good tidings of a son whose name is يحيى we have given the same name to none before so while he was praying Allah gave him good tidings of the son and he said that uh, this son is a is a unique in the name we have not given this name anybody before this name and it's not only the name But, but also his characteristics were unique which were not never before like in Quran it said that uh, uh, and we granted him wisdom while he is yet a child Miss Allah gave him wisdom like a child who see Yahya al -Islam was born before then then Isa al -Islam came into the world so when he, first was Yahya al -Islam. So when Yahya -Islam came, Allah says in the Quran about him that we granted him wisdom while he is yet a child. He was the first one to get like this in this planet. As a child he has wisdom. And he was said to be honorable and chaste. And the third uh, great merit he had was when the Quran said and peace on him on the day when he was born and on the day he dies and on the day he is raised to life. Three salam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These three salam came after the Isa alayhi salam, but he was born afterward. So Allah gave him these three great characteristics. And uh, somebody came to Muhammad Bakr alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, he sat down with him. So Imam said to him that Allah used as evidence for Imamat what he used and evidence for prophethood. And then he said these verses. And we granted him wisdom while yet a child. And then again he said, until when he attains his maturity and reaches 40 years. Different stages Allah from Allah SWT. So, Imam says that wisdom can be given as a child and wisdom can be given when you are 40 years old. And when we, we know the case of Imam Muhammad Taqi salam, when he was 80 years old he got Imamat. So many thousands of scholars came and asked him questions he was answering them. Answering them. So whatever Allah wills he does. قَالَ الرَّبِّي أَنَّا يَكُونُ لِغُلَامُ وَكَانَ وَكَانَ تِمْرَتُ قَالَ الرَّبِّي أَنَّا يَكُونُ لِغُلَامُ وَكَانَ كَانَ تِمْرَتِي آقِرًا وَقَدْ بَلَقْتُ مِنْ كِبْرِي 
Atiya. He said, My Lord, how shall there be for me a son while my wife is bare and I have reached in from old age? He was kind of wondering about it. When the news came to him while he was praying about the great dying of the Yahya Salam, he, he was wondering how it is possible that while my wife is barren and I am in old age. Etiyah means old age, feeble age. So now question comes that why he asked this question. Didn't he believe what Allah said? He believed it. Just like the question about Ibrahim alayhi salam. That uh, when Ibrahim alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that how you want to, how you want to give the life to dead people. So Allah asked him question that don't you believe this Ibrahim alayhi salam? Uh, don't you believe Ibrahim? He said I believe but I want to have just peace of my heart. Right? We, we know that story, right? I just need the peace of my heart. Same thing was with Zakaria alayhi salam. He wanted peace of the heart, you know, about it. A, a, just a thought crossed his mind about it, that how it's going to happen. قَالَ قَزَالِكَ قَالَ رَبُّكَ هُوَ عَلَيَّ حَيِّنُمْ وَقَدْ خَلَقْتُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَلَمْ تَكُوْ شَيْعَا He says, so your Lord says, it is easy for me, for indeed I created you a full time when you were nothing. He said to him that, uh, Allah told him that it is easy for me, uh, uh, for indeed I created you when you were nothing. Allah said that you are wondering how how he'll come to this world in the old age. Allah says you were nothing Zakaria and I gave you all this uh, your existence here. So if you were nothing I give you existence for me it is easy to give you a son in old age. Qala Rabbi Ja'alli Aya Allah ayatuka Allah to kullamunun nasa salasa layalin saviya. He said, My Lord, appoint for me a sign. Said he, Your sign is that you shall not be able to speak to people for three nights, thou sound. So then he started wondering and he wanted to calm his heart down. He said, Oh Allah, give me some sign about it. Because I want to make sure this, this is coming from you, not from Shaitan, which I am listening. I want to make sure this from you. So he said to Allah, Allah give me signs. Allah said, I give you signs that be, being you healthy, still you will not be able to talk to from your tongue for three nights, means three days are also included. Except that he, he could do uh, like tasbihat. He, uh, so that, that's exactly happened to him, that he could not talk for three nights and three days. And he could just do Allah's tasbihat and that's about it. So, Elizabeth says that when the great tiding of Yahya alayhi salam came to Zakaria alayhi salam and then the real existence of uh, Yahya came in the world was after five years. So he had to wait five years after that. That incidence when he was given the great tiding till the birth of Yahya alayhi salam. See how much he kept even patience for that. And we are like this, we are so sinner, you know. If we do to Adullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not except in one month or two months or three months or a, a six months, we get so so much depressed and anxious and angry and and we lose faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We get upset with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We question everything. But look at this this story, you know. These, these stories are the story for understanding and following the, uh, the sunnah of prophets. That how they keep patience and how they, they follow and how Allah loves them. Because if the dua is not accepted quickly, that means Allah wants to raise our station high, you know. Allah wants to see that how much we, we really believe Him. Uh, so he keeps, he wants to see us, you know. Uh, there are a lot of narrations that for the believer, Allah wants to prolong the accept, acceptance of dua. So he wants to hear Allah calling him, you know. Allah loves to hear believer calling him, Rabbi, 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 you know. Like here, he was calling with Rabbi twice, you know. He wants to hear our beautiful voice, you know. So he wants to hear us. Because we, you know how we are. We call Allah more when we are in need. Otherwise, we don't call him much anyway. 
So he, he wants to hear us, you know. And we just, we just get upset, you know. These are the serious things we need to ponder in these verses. How our life is every day is, and when Allah holds on something. There are a lot of us in the Quran that, that people don't call him unless there is a problem and they start calling him by laying down, standing and sitting in all positions. And when the dua is accepted, then they don't care about Allah SWT, as if he doesn't exist even. So uh, many verses in the Quran about it. So th these are a serious situation when we can raise our station high spiritually by, by keeping patience and being with Allah and have the full sense that Allah is listening to us, full sense that Allah knows our heart, you know, full sense and just be with Allah SWT. May Allah guide towards this level and may Allah make us uh, so, uh, sin free so that we can get close to Allah SWT. فَخَرَجَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ مِنَ الْمَحْرَابِ فَأَوْحَىٰ إِلَيْهِمْ أَنْ سَبِّحُوا بُكْرَةً وَعَشِيَّةً Then he went out into his people and made signs unto them that they should glorify morning and evening. Because he could not talk then. So he was in Mehrab. So he came out and he, he showed a sign. And he said that, that glorify Allah morning and evening. Glorification. The, the glorification is the key. Some said that uh, here glorification means doing salat also, because in salat a glorification is included. And why he asked his people to do also glorification? Not only him, because Yahya Rasulullah was coming for whole ummah there, for the whole nation. It, Yahya would be the blessing for everybody. So he said that that ummah should also do that. Prophet Sallallahu says about glorification. The most below saying with Allah the glorious is that the servant says glory to be my Lord praise be to him that's the most beautiful thing we can say Imam Sadiq salam says whosoever glorify Allah 30 times every day Allah the blessed the exalted may remove 70 affliction from him the least of which is poverty subhanallah Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, The hymns of Fatima Zahra Salama alayha after every prayer is more belowed with me than 1000 unit of prayer in a day. These are the values of glorifications. And those are the glorifications we need to do when we uh, do glorification. It brings a lot of enlightenment in our heart. The glorification brings a lot of enlightenment in our heart. A lot of closeness to our heart. So when we were when we talk about Zakaria uh, Yahya alayhi salam, automatically we start thinking about Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Because there are a lot of similarities between Yahya alayhi salam and Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Both were martyred. Imam says they are the killer of Yahya alayhi salam and killer of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. They were not legitimate birth. That was their characteristics. And when Imam Hussein was martyred and when Yahya alayhi salam was martyred, the sky cried on only, only two martyrs. Only these two martyrs. And the, the way the sky cried was that the sky turned red because of the, the pain. Uh, 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 the sky was crying about the pain. The, those, were the, those, those were the two below of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah loved them so much. Kaf is Karbala. From half it is said Halakat. From Ya it is said Yazid. From Ayn it is said Atash. The thrust of El Albayt. From Thwal it is said Sabr. What we have Karbala is in, in these five letters. The description of Karbala, how Imam Hussain suffered and how he was struggling and how he, he fought the battle against Yazid and how there was a thrust so much involved and how much he was had a tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, the confidence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we, uh, we were reading this this commentary today we saw that how Zakari alayhi salam was calling and dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his son to be given to him the Yah alayhi salam was given same way we see Imam Ali alayhi salam in the night he is calling and doing dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begging for his son that Allah give me a son who is a strong son who can help my Hussain he was asking about Abul Fazl Abbas who will be there for Imam Hussain in Karbala which was the toughest battle ever seen the humanity in this planet the toughest battle and he was the commander in chief of that battle Abu Fazil Ab Abbas who was there in Karbala for the for the thrust of Ahl al -Bayt, the thrust of our children of Imam Hussain and he gave his both arm for the thrust of Ahl al -Bayt. Alhamdulillah